Okay, so now we're going to consider the second case where we have extreme and critical and, and saddle points, and we want to talk about um, a region constrained by uh, straight lines. So the example we're going to do then is 14.7.35. So we're back to the textbook, and it's the following example. Uh, you have t of xy is equal to x squared plus xy plus y squared minus 6x plus 2. All right, and you're on the region uh, 0 is less than uh, x is less than 5, and negative 3 is less than y is less than 0. Okay, so uh, what do we do now? Well, okay, um, let's draw this region first. So, what is that region? Well, the region is going to be uh, the following area under uh, the x axis. We're going to go from 0 to 5, so like out there and then zero to three, so something like that, right? And now we're just gonna take this bottom part right here, since we're constrained by x is zero, and y is zero up top, and this is gonna be our region, right? So y zero is up here, x is zero is over here, here's three, and here's five, all right? So that's five, and that's three, or negative three, okay? And now what we want to do then is, uh, so the goal is to find the absolute extrema, all right? So how do we find the absolute extrema? Well, step one is to find uh, the local extrema on the inside, all right? And there's a reason why I'm saying on the inside, but anyways, what we have to do then is first we say T of X, and what's that? That's two X uh, plus, y and minus 6 is equal to 0 okay and then you got ty which is then x all right and then plus 2y is equal to 0 all right and this is this is interesting because now i got equation with x's and y's right inside and i need to satisfy the above equation as well so how are we going to do this well <laughs> We see that, okay, uh, x then is equal to negative 2y, and we're going to substitute that um, into, the, uh, into the first equation. So this is from the second equation. Maybe I should write it this way. Uh, so we see x is equal to negative 2y, and then substituting it in, into the first equation, I get 2 times negative 2y plus y uh, minus 6 is equal to 0. All right, so negative 4y plus y minus 6 is equal to 0. I get negative 3y is equal to 6, and then y is equal to negative 2. And we see that x is equal to negative 2y, so x is going to be equal to 4. Okay, and are we done? Well, and so, so we have one critical point here then. This is 4 comma negative 2. All right, are we done? Well, yeah, more or less, we are done, right? Because there, there isn't, uh, there isn't really anything else we can do here, right? These are all linear equations, and so essentially solved a system of equations, um, two variables, two unknowns. Okay, so yeah, um, we're done. So this is my interior critical point, and so now I'm just going to make a list of critical points I need to find, right? Or I need to evaluate my function at because look, we're trying to find the ex we're trying to find the absolute extrema, right? We're not trying to find any local points. I'm not trying to say if something's a local min or a saddle. I'm trying to find the absolute biggest and smallest values I need. So that means um, step one really should be the critical points on the inside. And okay, so critical points on the inside, and that means I just need a list of critical points. And then I just need to evaluate my function at these critical points because then I'll find a largest one and I'll find a smallest one and that's just going to be my absolute value, okay? So when you have absolute extrema, you only need lists of critical points, all right? This Hessian stuff up here, this Hessian stuff only went, only occurs when you need to characterize, all right? So this is characterizing the critical points. And down here, we're finding the absolute extrema. So that's the difference as well, all right? And again, absolute extrema, you need a, you need a boundary. Here we have this boundary. Okay, so 
Now what? So step one was to find critical points on the inside. Step two is to find the critical points on the boundary. And how do we do that? Well, all right, so you have t of x, y, right, is, is, is above. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite it. t of x, y is equal to x squared plus x, y plus y squared minus 6x plus 2. All right. So how do we find critical points on boundaries? And what do you mean find critical points on boundary? Step one, we only found the critical points on the interior. We really only found where I'm shading in the red right now. We did not touch these blue boundaries at all. So now what we do is that for each line, we fix the value of that line, and then we find the critical value using uh, just standard calc AB stuff. So what do I mean? So consider then, let's see, oh, let's consider this line right here. All right, this line right here on the right-hand side, this is x equals five. So on x equals five, we have well, I plug in 5 into t, and so I get 25 squared. If I can get this right, 25, or 5 squared is 25, plus 5y, plus y squared, minus, well, 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2, all right? And so now I get y squared plus 5y minus 3, all right? And now what do I want? Well, now I need to find what value y is going to take on, right? And in order to find what value y is going to take on, I'm going to say, oh, okay, well, I know how to find the critical points of this guy. I just need to take the derivative with respect to y, right? So this is t of 5 comma y, which means I plugged in 5 for x, right? And now I take this derivative with respect to y and set it equal to 0, which is standard calc AB stuff, and I get 2y plus 5 is equal to 0, all right? And now what? Uh, okay. Now I need to solve for y, so y is equal to negative 5 halves, and I get this critical point on x equals 5, which is 5 comma negative 5 halves, right? Yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's a critical point. So I get 5 comma negative 5 halves. All right, cool. Now what else? Well, that's only one of the lines, right? So now i got to do this line down here as well. This is y equals negative 3. So in order to solve that, I have to check on y equals negative 3, all right? And now I plug in y equals negative 3 up here. What do I get? I get x squared minus 3x plus 9 minus 6x plus 2, right? And this is x squared minus 6x, well, minus 9x, minus 9x um, plus 11, all right? Now, uh, I need to take the derivative of this guy. This is t of x comma negative 3. All right, take the derivative of that guy. I get 2x minus 9, set that equal to 0. And we see that x should be equal to 9 halves. And so on y equals 3, I get a critical point of uh, 9 halves comma negative 3. Okay? And now what? Now, I need to check uh, x equals 0, right? So what do I get here? Well, this is 0. That's 0. That's zero, so I get y squared plus two, y squared plus two, all right? And then taking derivative, I get two y is equal to zero, so I get y equals zero, and so I get the point zero, zero. And then likewise, on y equals zero, I get, okay, so now this is uh, zero, zero, and so I get x squared minus six x plus two. If my computer screen will scroll, please, okay? x squared uh, minus 6x plus 2, and this gets me uh, taking the derivative, 2x minus 6 is equal to 0, I get x is equal to 3, right? So I get a critical point, 3 comma 0. Okay, so now what? Now, okay, so in my list of critical points, I got that. I got 9 halves comma negative 3, all right? Now I got 0, 0, and I got 3, 0. Okay. Am I done? Well, it's tempting to say you're done here, but the next step, one more step, step three, and this is the part that gets everyone or gets a lot of people. Um, when you have straight lines, right? Straight line segments, uh, you run into problems where you have like corners. 
and you might not, your critical point might not be at the corner, but you still have to evaluate the corners anyways. So now we need to label our corners, which are 0, 0, 5, 0, uh, 0, negative 3, and uh, 5, negative 3, and we have to put our corners in. So I'm going to erase this guy. And so critical points are going to be 0, 0. Well, 0, 0 is already here, right? So that's fine. I don't have, I don't have to re-add the critical point if it's already there. Um, but 5, 0 is not in there. Uh, 5, negative 3 is certainly not in there. And 0, negative 3 is certainly not in there as well. So I got this giant list of critical points now I need to evaluate. So step 3 is to um, uh, corners our critical points. Okay. And so just a quick recap. Whoa, what a glitch there. Uh, just a quick recap. This was from step one, right? I found the interior, right? It was, it was in the red. So I guess this should be red. Okay, so this should be from step one, all right? Step two are my blue guys. So these guys are from step two. And then step three are the remaining corner points, right? That I need to find. Or I need to add, okay? And so now what? Now I just plug these guys into T. So where's T? T's up here, right? T's up here. And now I just gotta evaluate it. So what's T at four comma negative two? 16 minus eight plus four minus 24 plus two is, oh God, um, the negative 10. Okay, so this is negative 10. All right, what's t at five comma five halves, uh, or negative five halves, and negative 37 over four, and t at five comma, or, or t at nine halves comma negative three is negative 37 over four. t at zero, zero is two. t at three, zero is negative seven, all right? T at five zero is negative three. T at five negative three, we get five negative three, you get negative nine. And then T at zero negative three is positive 11, all right? And so what do we have? Well, this guy's the smallest, all right? This guy's the smallest, this guy's the largest, and so we see um, the max is at zero comma negative three, the min is at four comma negative two, all right? And that's what we get. So uh, notice we would have missed the maximum if we didn't check the corners, right? The, the maximum is zero negative three. It's this corner point in the bottom left. So yeah, check your corners because you're gonna get the problem wrong. And one last thing that we didn't check. What was the last thing? What, 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 what did we not do here? Okay. One thing that we didn't do is that we need to make sure that all these points are in this freaking region, right? Cause this happens. This actually happens a lot. Um, one of these critical points isn't even going to be in the region. Let's say it ends up like out here, right? Let's say, let's say this is a critical point. Let's say this is like two comma two, right? It's not in the region. So don't even evaluate it. Okay. So if you get a critical point, not in the region, don't evaluate it. So, uh, don't evaluate critical points outside of the region. So don't get baited by that. It's a rookie move. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of pitfalls here, right? You need to check the corners. You need to not get baited by outside the region. You need to check each boundary itself. You need to check the interior. There are a lot of steps. Absolute extrema are absolute pain in the ass. So that's, I guess, that's why you can call them absolute extrema. Sure, why not? Um, and we're done for 14.7. So we covered, uh, in the previous video, we covered then just characterization of critical points, essentially, on open regions. And, and here we covered uh, finding absolute extrema on a bounded region. So notice, I titled this section when we have straight lines. This is very nice that we can just do our calc AB shit, right? 
this this step two this is essentially calc a b right here um because we have straight line boundaries what happens when they curve what happens if i have a circle what happens if i have a disc at x uh, at, at center on an origin right what if this was my region instead of the line well now if it were a disc it's really 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 hard to uh substitute values in right because you're not just going to substitute x equals five you're going to be substituting x squared plus y squared is equal to four like what so that's the next part 14 8 is going to be what happens if my bounds are wacky shit like really crazy stuff like i can i can i can talk about my bounds being like a paraboloid or an ellipse or a budget constraint in economics so this is really cool 14 is really cool we're talking about optimization essentially finding absolute extrema on constraints that aren't just square regions and so that's all of 14 8 it's uh we use a method called lagrange multipliers it's for econ majors is by far away the most important thing you're going to learn in this class so we're going to see an example in 14 8 and that will be the next video